Right, okay. Today we are going to discuss an ANOVA approach to regression, which is going to be very practical. And <clears throat> it, it, you, this is uh, one of the most essential parts in regression. Um, so this is what we are after. ANOVA means analysis of variance. Analysis of variance, ANOVA. This is the most common approach uh, that we use in uh, regression. Right. Um, can someone please confirm uh, whether you can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I could have checked it earlier. Right, it's okay. <coughs> Okay, so this approach plays a dominant role in multiple linear regression as well as simple linear regression, right? <coughs> so we are talking about partitioning of total sums of scars. So I'll explain you what that is. The analysis of variance ANOVA approach is based on the partitioning of sums of squares and degrees of freedom associated with the response variable by. So for the moment, we have just one response and one predictor variable as we are dealing with simple linear regression. So <clears throat> in this ANOVA approach, we partition, <coughs> we put into parts like sums of scars and uh, there's a term called degrees of freedom. You all should have been familiar with this so far. Uh, so let's discuss how to find this out, so on and so forth, right? <coughs> Mainly there are three different sums of squares that we talk in regression. So that is total sum of squares, regression sum of squares, error sum of squares, some people, uh, call this sums of scars of total. That is why it is denoted as SSTO, sums of scars of total. Some people say this is sums of scars of regression, SSR, and sums of scars of error, SSE. So you can call it either way, but the notation is SSTO, SSR, and SSE. There's another <coughs> similar word for error, and that is <coughs> residuals. Okay, in some books, SSR is referred to error sum of squares, which means sums of squares of residuals, and they give another term for this one. But throughout this course, <coughs> we are dealing with this notation, so don't mix up, although this is this could be called as residuals. We are going with the term error, which is denoted by SSE, sums of squares of error, or error sums of squares. So stick to this notation, don't mix up. Throughout the course, even in your exam, we are going to deal with this notation only, just to avoid confusion. But when you are reading additional material, you might come across things like this. So that's why I just told you in some books, they use uh, residual sums of class as SSR. So don't confuse as we are using SSTO for total, SSR for regression, SSE for error, sums of class respectively. <clears throat> right, so let's talk how we are going to find this out. So these are the basic formulas for SSTO. <coughs> this measures the sum of scars, the square deviations, the gaps of the observation around their mean. So this is how you compute sum of squares of this deviation. It's easy to remember, right? Sum of squares of this deviation, the gap between yi and y bar. That means the true observation and the mean. <clears throat> In this figure, you can see figure A. So total deviation is given by the y1 and y2. They have just given 
<clears throat> two observations for demonstration purposes, right? Why I is uh, those are our observations. Why is y1, y2, y3, likewise. If we have n in the sample, we have y1 up to yn. So here for demonstration, they have given just two observations. y1, see this observation is here. This observation is here. Likewise, we can have a number of observations. At the moment we are talking about two to give you out some idea about the deviation. y bar means what? You are taking the mean of all these responses. Y bar. Summation yi over n will give you y bar. So y bar is just a, it's a constant, right? Throughout this, uh, these all ranges of x, y bar is a constant. So the gap between y bar and each of these observations, you have to take it one by one, square it, and then take the summation which is what you call SSTO. You take the gap, square it. So I goes from one to N, right? So Y1 minus Y bar squared plus Y2 minus Y bar squared plus likewise up to YN minus Y bar squared. That is how you compute this. So <coughs> you have to know this formula at least how to compute this, right? Although you don't buy hard this formula, you should know how to compute this manually, right? You take each and every observation, take the deviation with the mean, take the square, sum it up. SSR, sums of squares of regression. Okay, we take the square deviation and the summation of y i hat around the mean. So basically, this is equal to this. Even though you <coughs> take the summation of all the original observations and divide it by n, you are getting y bar. Or even you can take the fitted values after fitting the regression line. You even can take the fitted value and take the mean that is going to be equal to your original mean. So that is a property. Okay. So here, anyway, you are taking the gaps between not the two true observation and y bar but the fitted observation and y bar right true observation <coughs> is different from the fitted line right it's something like this uh let me explain that to you properly so you have the cases like this and if you have true observations Okay, and say your y bar is somewhere here, right? This is your fitted regression y. So let's take this observation at this x level, say x1. This is y1, okay? But this is our regression line. So corresponding to this x1, this is our y1 hat. Because this is the fitted line. Let's take this one, say this is the nth observation, right? Okay, this is the fitted one. So this value here is xn, nth observation, and this value here is yn, the true observation that we have in our data set. This is yn hat. So in SSR, we are getting the deviation <clears throat> between this value and this value. We are taking the deviation between this value and this value, okay? We take the deviation, <coughs> square it, and take the summation for all. That's how we compute SSR, sums of scars of regression. That is given there in that figure. Uh, <coughs> in figure C, you can see that. So this is the fitted line observation. This is the mean. You are getting the deviation. Right? That is how you compute that. There's an alternative formula for this because this takes a lot of time. 
you have to fill the line uh, <coughs> by substituting all the x values to the lines you have to get this y i hat right so that is time consuming i'll tell you what to do uh, instead of this formula you can use an equivalent another formula i'll give you that that is easy this one is error sums of squares <coughs> this measures the sum of squared deviation in the y i observations that is present when the predictor x variable is taken into account right so here you are taking the gaps between the true value and the fitted value at each x level so basically that is what you call the error right true value how it is deviated from the fitted value you are taking the gap between y i and y i hat y i is the true observation that you have been the data set under the response variable y i hat is the fitted value so that gap gives you error how do you take the error sums of stars you take all the gaps which is squared and then you are taking the summations so it's like y1 minus y1 hat squared plus y2 minus y1 hat squared plus likewise up to yn minus yn hat squared <coughs> sorry so in sse you are taking the gap between these two you are taking the gap between these two that is sse <coughs> okay so that's shown in figure b you are taking the gap between these so you are doing this for all the observations that you have so anyway in anova <coughs> you really don't have to feed this formula uh, just to save your time i'll tell you another technique of getting this it's okay to get uh, by using this formula but it's very time consuming to compute sst or ssr sse uh, by those formula so you just have to <coughs> compute this by using this formula that's it i'll give you an easier formula to compute this one or you can use this even doesn't matter you can use either of these sse you really don't have to compute because of this relationship if you know this one if you know this one do you have to compute this back again no it's just a matter of taking the difference between these two sst is equal to ssr plus sss total sums of squares is given by the summation of regression sums of squares and there are sums of squares so it's just a matter of computing this one and this one only you can easily get this <coughs> it's okay to go with the formulas but it's time consuming you um you'll feel this when you tend to do this anyway i'm giving you an assignment today there you have to compute all these so anyway we are doing an activity before the assignment so you will get to know how to do this don't worry these are easy stuff other thing is you have to be thorough with these formulas not all just how to compute this if you have that in head that's enough for this course <coughs> okay <coughs> the total deviation obtained from the response <coughs> yi can be decomposed into two components the deviation of the fitted value yi hat around the mean the deviation of the observation yi around the fitted regression line so total deviation is equal to this one deviation of fitted regression value around the mean that means this one plus this quantity okay when you do the mathematics you will find out that sums of squares are also uh, going in this relationship right 
<clears throat> so the derivation is out of your scope. You can derive uh, this one by using this one. You can derive that, <laughs> but the derivation is out of your scope. So don't worry. You just have to know this. Total sums of scars is equal to regression sums of scars and error sums of scars. That's all what you have to know. Further, I told you uh, there's an easier formula to compute this. <coughs> Another one, right? SSR can be expressed as this one. As long as you have already fitted the regression line, you know the value of the slope parameter that is beta one beta one hat, you know the estimated value of the slope parameter. Y is equal to beta naught plus beta one x. So that beta one is coming here and you have to square it, the estimated value and multiply it by SXX, which you have found before. SXX means what? Summation x n minus x plus one. <coughs> <coughs> this is easy. Why? Because you, you already know these x values. Right? Computing x, SXX is easier than computing this quantity because here you have to plug in all the x values to the regression line and take y1 hats. You have to compute that and then take the deviation. I hope you got my point. So, what I meant was this. So, initially you have yi's and x size in your data set, right? Based on this, you are fitting a regression line. <coughs> okay. So how do you compute y i hat? You have to plug in beta naught hat here, beta one hat here, and all these x values here. <coughs> to get another column called y i hat. So if you plug in all these x i values here, x one up to x n, you are getting y one hat up to y n hat. So to get the deviation, you have to compute this column. That is time consuming, right? But s x x is easy to compute. <coughs> you have to get x bar out of these and you have to take the deviations get this car sum. You don't have to compute this color, right? <coughs> Beta one hat squared can be taken out of this as long as you have already fitted this. So that is an easier formula to use. You can use any of them. I don't mind. Uh, so it's up to you to decide. Anyway, everything should give you the same value at the end. <coughs> Okay, so you can get used to this formula. SSE, actually, you don't have to use the formula as long as you know this relationship. Right. It's easy to get by this. <coughs> Breaking uh, down of degrees of freedom. <coughs> DF stands for degrees of freedom. So for SSTO, we say we have N minus one degrees of freedom. What does it mean? Okay. So when we take this quantity for all the n observations, we have n number of deviations, okay? But the sample mean y bar has to be estimated. So out of all the <coughs> observ out of all the observations, out of all these, this particular thing has to be estimated, right? Hence, one degrees of freedom is lost number of independent information that you have one is lost because you have to estimate this right <coughs> so we say we have n minus one degrees of freedom that is the reason behind getting this n minus one but <coughs> for any scenario <coughs> SSTO degrees of freedom is n minus one total number of observations minus one SSE has n minus two degrees of freedom why here you have n number of deviation y1 minus y1 hat up to yn minus yn hat. When getting this one, 
you have to estimate two parameters y i hat is equal to <coughs> beta naught hat plus beta one hat x i right so you have to estimate two things so you lose two degrees of freedom right so that is that will give you n minus two degrees of freedom similarly SSR has one degrees of freedom <coughs> in simple radial regression case. You don't have to think about any of these. So this one minus this one will give you this one, right? When we go with this formula, total minus error will give you regression sums of scars. Even in computing degrees of freedom, if you know this one, if you know this one, it's just a matter of taking the difference n minus one minus n minus two. So which will give you one. Okay, the explanation is this. <coughs> the simple linear regression, this is one all the time. You can uh, express it like this. They're talking about regressors. So what are the regressors that we have? Only x. That is the regressor. Okay. So this is actually the degrees of freedom of SSR is equal to number of predictor variables that you have. So when it comes to multiple linear regression, when you have many number of x's, x1, x2, x3, likewise, again, that is going to be equal to the number of x's that you have. You can remember these things like this. You don't have to buy heart all these. For any case, this is n minus one, <coughs> right? For any case, this is number of predictor variables that you have in your uh, model, x1. So here we have just x, just one predictor variable. So the degrees of freedom is one. You can take it like that. So n one n minus one minus one will give you n minus two. <clears throat> right. So that's how you get it. Okay, but for simple linear regression case, this is constant. Right. So there's some other measures that you will be needing in filling the ANOVA table. Uh, <coughs> These are not complicated. It's just a matter of dividing these quantities. Sums of scars divided by its associated degrees of freedom is called the mean scar. Like, if we divide the sums of scars of regression by the degrees of freedom of sums of scars of regression, that will give you mean squared regression, MSR. Same case for here. If you divide sums of scars of error by the corresponding degrees of freedom of SSC, then you are getting MSE mean squared error. This is familiar to you, right? Yes, from an table, you simply can get this. SSC divided by degrees of freedom. Is there any measure called MSTO uh, mean scars total? No, there's nothing like that. In the ANOVA table, if you divide the sums of scars of total by the corresponding degrees of freedom, then you're going to lose marks. <clears throat> There's nothing like that. That is undefined. Only for regression and error, you have this, right? There's a pattern in filling the ANOVA table. It's very easy, right? It's going to be one of the easiest questions that you'll be getting. <coughs> so, just uh, speed up your computations and uh, don't do careless mistakes. That's all that you have to do in this. It's very easy. Right. And what table displays the breakdowns of SSTO and corresponding degrees of freedom. Breakdowns means what? SSE and SSR. Further, it shows the column of mean squares. It has columns, a couple of columns, right? The general format of ANOVA table for simple linear regression is this one, okay? <coughs> Source of variation, right? Regression, error, total. So you have to stick to this table format, okay? 
you first have the regression error and total you have a column for sums of scars you have a column for degrees of freedom you have a column for mean scars and another column called f ratio okay it's very easy it's very easy doing this right what do you put here so this is regression so you put sums of scars of regression here you compute that put it here what is this value sums of scars of error why this is the error row okay you are plugging in this value here and you are plugging in sums of scars of total here right so that is what i said if you compute this one if you compute this one it's just a matter of taking the difference between these two to put it here <coughs> it's very easy right and you know the degrees of freedom <coughs> in simple linear regression degrees of freedom of sums of scars of regression is always one why because we just have a single predictive variable Reg regressor variable how many regressors that we have just one <clears throat> that's why you put here then the degrees of freedom of ssto is what n minus 1 degrees of freedom of sse is what n minus 2 n means the sample size right okay how do you compute the mean scar this is the formula so it's very easy here in the regression row you have to fill the mean <coughs> scar regression right how do you get it this one divided by corresponding degrees of freedom so it's just basically this right how do you get this one this quantity divided by its corresponding degrees of freedom sse divided by n minus 2 that comes here do we have anything here no because that is undefined if you divide this one by this one and put a value here you are going to lose marks minus marks right so there's nothing here how do you get the f ratio just divide this one by this one msr means scar regression <coughs> divided by mse simple simple as that so this is a table value right f table this is not the table value this is something like the test statistic i know you all are familiar with how this is testing uh last year you learned it so we are going to why are we constructing this particular annual table to check some significance of the model right uh how are we going to check the significance by performing a hypothesis test so we are constructing all these things step by step in order to go for the hypothesis testing to test whether the model is significant or not if the model is significant you can use it no problem if the model is insignificant <coughs> it is useless right <clears throat> how can a model be insignificant that is the next question very easy so i'll tell you that uh <coughs> okay just make note on these on as well you all know this already uh mse is the estimate of a sigma scar we have used this property before when constructing confidence intervals and expected value of msr <coughs> that is sums of scars of regression divided by its corresponding degrees of freedom we take the expected value of that that is the estimated value of that it is given by sigma scar plus this quantity okay so just keep that in head you will be using this in the future right so this is what basically the anova table does f test for simple linear regression model this is not hard this is very easy <coughs> anova table provides a useful test to test whether the slope parameter is zero all slope parameter is different from zero for simple linear regression so this is what basically we are testing using the hypothesis testing technique um in terms of anova 
right? Analysis of variance. We are analyzing the variance of the model. That is basically what we do in this, right? We are checking whether our model is significant. <coughs> How can we say our model is significant or not by this test? <coughs> So, what does this mean? This is related to this. Yeah, this is a relationship. This is a functional form of this part. Relationship between X and Y. How do they vary according to this formula? To make this one significant, significant means important, to make this is usable. Practically, this should be usable if there is a relationship between these two, if there exists a significant relationship between these two variables. The most important parameter is this one. What if this becomes zero? <coughs> this whole term cancels out. Then <coughs> this is becoming a constant. There's no relationship between these two if this term becomes zero. So how do we check whether our model is significant or not? Our null hypothesis is we are always going with the parameter in hypothesis testing. If you can remember your second year course, <coughs> we are not putting hats here, that's wrong, right? Because beta one hat is a value. It's a value given to that parameter, estimate given to that parameter, okay? So we are checking whether this is equal to zero, always the equal sign comes and it's not. Null means there's no significance, see? No significance, null. So if it's not is true, that means null. There's nothing, nothing to take out of this model. It comes out with the meaning, right? So beta one <coughs> is equal to zero means there's nothing. This is not usable, not, not useful at all. Nothing. So we, uh, the model is significant if H1 is true. So if this is equal to zero, <coughs> H1 is if you don't know the direction, you can put it like this. So this can be either positive or negative. If you know the direction, this could be something like this, or this could be something like this. By keeping this like this, it's okay, right? It's okay to have that if you know the direction. <coughs> that is coming from common sense. You know how uh, these are uh, going to vary, whether this is, a, this is increasing or decreasing. Right? So basically we are testing this. It's not is always this, right? It's one corresponding to our problem. We are forming our H1. So we are checking whether the model is significant or not. We are not checking whether it is, <coughs> this is a positive relationship or a negative. We are not checking that. Even we can check that as well, right? Here in this problem, we are checking whether <coughs> this is significant or not. So if this model is significant, beta one has to be different from zero. So it's one should be correct if there is a significance of this model. So to test this particular hypothesis, we use something called F test. Why do we call it F test? Because simply we are using the F statistic and using the F statistical table, right? We are going to read the values and our decision rule is formed using this F table, statistical table. So simply we give it a name as F test, just like the Z test, T test that you know, right? Z test, you use the standard normal table. T test, you use the T distribution table, likewise. <clears throat> for the F test, you will use the F table. So basically, to check this hypothesis out of ANOVA, you do the F test. 
Any questions? <coughs> You can ask if there's any question up to now. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> yeah, basically, this is the test statistic. This is nothing but this value msr over msc division of these two see so this is distributed at f1 n minus 2 so in <clears throat> f you know you have two degrees of freedom the numerator degrees of freedom and the denominator degrees of freedom right <clears throat> this is the significance level in T test, you have just one degree of freedom, right? In F test, you have two degrees of freedom, numerator and denominator. Y'all should be a little bit familiar with these, at least, right? <coughs> when you see the F table, you will recall all these. So this is distributed as this. But how do you get these? One and N minus two? One is the degrees of freedom of this the numerator, right? N minus two is the degrees of freedom of this, the denominator. <coughs> MSR degrees of freedom is one. MSE degrees of freedom is N minus two, see? In this one, degrees of freedom is one. Here, degrees of freedom is this. It's like this. F ratio, you are getting uh, the ratio between these two. This is the numerator, this is the denominator, <coughs> and this is distributed as F. This is the numerator degrees of freedom. This is the denominator degrees of freedom. So <coughs> for our convenience, we are constructing our uh, ANOVA table like this. So don't interchange these things. It's not wrong, but it's, you know, that's not the way. The standard way of constructing the ANOVA table is first the regression, then the error, then the total. So stick to this one. Otherwise, it's a bit complicated, right? Simply, you have to take the ratios between all these in the given order. If you follow this table format, right? That's easier for you and me both. Don't interchange these. Even though you interchange, just <coughs> compute this thing properly, right? But why to interchange, interchange and complicate things? This is the standard way of an NOA table. Right, so once you computed this, you are done with hypothesis testing. It's just a matter of writing a few lines, right? You have to form the hypothesis. You have to form the decision rule, right? <clears throat> you have to do the test and make the decision. And in plain language, you have to interpret it, right? So that is depending on the problem we'll do one today. <coughs> So this is the decision rule. You don't have to buy hard things, right? If F ratio is greater than the critical value or the table value, we reject based on. So why should we buy hard this as long as we can argue and take it? What is the F distribution? It is a positively skewed distribution. This is F distribution, right? <coughs> We take the rejection region as this. Since this is a this is starting from zero, since this is a positive distribution, <coughs> even the absolute, even though you take the absolute value or whatever it is, you are getting this region. So this is the rejection region. Right? This is the critical value. <coughs> Right, so basically in our case, this is the value. You can either write it like this or write it like this. First the numerator, then the denominator. You can use any way, any method. So this probability is alpha. The area under the curve is alpha, right? <coughs> so 
if our calculated value, so in the ANOVA table, we named it as X ratio, you can put whatever the name it is, or F star, or anything, <coughs> right? If the calculated value is somewhere here, we reject H star. So to make our model significant, we have to have the computed value in this region. That is what we expect. Sometimes if the model is insignificant, <coughs> we are getting a lesser value for this. So that is what we are checking. So by this particular figure, you can form the decision rule. What is the decision rule? Reject H naught if this value is less than this value. Or oh, you can say F star. If F star falls here, you reject H naught, right? If F star is greater than F critical. <coughs> critical value, you, you, re, you can read this from the table, right? You are given the significance level, whether it is 5 present or whatever. You know the sample size, so you can compute this part. It's just a matter of checking the value out of the table, read from the table. <coughs> <coughs> if you like, you can buy competition rule, otherwise, <coughs> construct it like this. <coughs> because there's a lot of <coughs> things to study. So, there are certain things that you can argue and logically get, right? So, don't try to buy hard these things just form the decision rule yourself, <clears throat> then you can save time. But if you prefer, you can buy hard, doesn't matter. Whatever uh, I want is to do a proper job at the end. If you understand and get this thing, <clears throat> this is lifetime. Otherwise, you will forget this. Right. <coughs> we'll do a small activity. Uh, revisit the air fried breakage example. Right, construct the ANOVA table <coughs> for this. this. Is the very first example that we use throughout this course, right? And test whether there is a linear relationship between the number of ampules broken and the number of transits from one air right to another by using high present level of significance. So uh, I'll just show you the example. <coughs> This is the example they're talking about. This could be found in uh, the second lecture, right? This is what they're talking about. So you have this data set, right? To form the <clears throat> ANOVA table, I know you need a certain formulas, right? For that, uh, for SSR computation, you will need uh, the SXX value, right? Beta naught and beta one. So I'll give you that. I think you have your previous notes with you. So uh, how can I share this? <coughs> so use 5% significance level. That means alpha is equal to 0 0.05. You'll be needing this in your hypothesis testing, right? So um, just compute, uh, okay, we'll construct the ANOVA table together, right? Let's go step by step by using this and the past, uh, so this is the data set, right? These are the formulas. <coughs> uh, yes, everything is here. I want you all to compute <laughs> SSTO, SSR, and SSE. So I told, told you an easy way of computing SSE, told you an easy way of computing SSR, right? Just compute these three values and put in the chat room, SSTO is equal to this, SSR is equal to this, SSE is equal to this, okay? We'll construct the ANOVA table then. Okay, I'll give you time. <clears throat> Please compute these three figures for me. Here are the formulas. Here's the data set. And uh, the model is y1, uh, yi is equal to 10.2 plus 4xi. 
So our beta naught is 10.2, beta 1 hat is 4. Right? Okay. Start. Okay, so what I <clears throat> ask you to first to compute SSTO, SSR, and SSE, right? So what is the formula in computing SSTO? It's given here. We are given the observations, all the Y i's here, and Y by is computed for you, right? It's just a matter of taking the difference between each and every component, <clears throat> squaring it, and taking the summation. It's easy as that. So how do you compute it? 16 minus 14.2 squared plus 9 minus 14.2 squared plus 17 minus 14.2 squared plus likewise up to here, 11 minus 14.2 squared, right? So that quantity will give you SSTO. How do you compute SSR? Beta 1 hat squared SXX. So the model is yi is equal to 10.2 plus 4 times x1, xi. That is the regression model that we fitted. So beta 1 is 4. So 4 squared times SXX is this one. SXX. So you can find this one, this one, and get the um, difference between these two to obtain this one. It's easy as that. Okay, maybe you have uh, stuck with the formula. So uh, let me write that out for you, but you should be able to do this. Um, <coughs> I think you can see my whiteboard now. So it's easy, right? So um, let me compute SSR first. All the formulas are given, so it's just plugging the values. Beta 1 hat is what? For y, the model is? So I'm, I'm talking about this. <coughs> SXX is 10. So this is 160. Okay, how do you compute SSTO? What is our formula? Okay, what does this mean if I expand this? So our n is what? <coughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. n is equal to 10. So we have 10 observations. Summation, i goes from 1 to 10. You don't have to write all these. Just show the computation. I'm just teaching you how to get this just because you couldn't come up with the computation. So what does this mean? y1 minus up to y10 minus y bar, right? <coughs> so what is y1? 16 minus 14.2. Y2 is? to 11 minus 14.2. So you have to take all these. So at the exam, when you are <coughs> asked to compute this one, you have to write this anyway. That's obvious. And you have to show a couple of things and directly like the answer. So here the answer is uh, <coughs> this is the answer. Okay. 
So at the exam, you don't need to write all these. I just showed you the way of substituting values, assuming that you found it difficult, right? It's not difficult. Um, anyway, at the exam, uh, if you are asked to compute SSR, you can simply show how you computed this one, this one, and this one, that's it. <coughs> you don't even have to write this, it's okay. Here, this one, you have to show this. You don't have to write all the 10 components here. It's time consuming, just write two or three. Anyway, including the first value and the last value, right, in the calculator, just enter these and get this. So this one should be there, this particular thing should be there, this should be there. When getting SSE, you just have to show how you got it. So you can write, <coughs> and simply the answer. So this is <coughs> this is what I got. Is this clear? Any uh, issue with the substitution? Any confusion with your? <coughs> is this understood? This is what I asked you to do. <coughs> just take a screenshot of this now as the next step <coughs> we are going to uh, get the ANOVA table <coughs> right so I'm going to clean this out please take a screenshot you can compute it later <coughs> okay so here I'm going to um, get the source of variation, right? Sums of squares, degrees of freedom, mean squares, and F ratio. You can simply put F here, doesn't matter, right? So here, <coughs> sums of squares of regression. You have to write all these. Error. And total. So you are putting SSR value here. We computed that a couple of minutes ago. That's 160. This is 177.6. You take the <coughs> subtraction and get this. What is the degrees of freedom? Our n is equal to 10 here. So total is n minus 1. Right? We have just one x variable, one predictor variable, one regressor. So it's <coughs> this is 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. How do you get the mean squares? This one divided by this one. So it's 160. Here, this one divided by this one. We have computed MSE before that was 2.2. See, we are getting that. How do you get the F ratio? This one <coughs> divided by this one. Don't write anything here, right? Don't take the ratio between these two and write it here, it's wrong. There's nothing like that, <coughs> okay? So here, what you have is this one divided by this one. It's very easy. This is all, this is the ANOVA table. So you got this by, right? You got this by, <coughs> so this is basically n minus 1, this is basically n minus 2. This is the SSR, this is the SSE. You don't have to put arrows and write this at the exam, I'm just showing you how you got this for your future reference, okay? 
just filling the black uh, letters is fine. That is what you are expected to do. You don't have to write these things. <coughs> is this clear? Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you for confirming. Right, so you should be able to do this alone. And now our question says, construct the ANOVA table and check whether there's a linear relationship between the response variable and the predictor variable and use an, uh, number of ampules broken and number of uh, <coughs> transfers in the aircraft, okay? They are asking to check whether there's a linear relationship. Okay, so what is the relationship that we got? Yi hat is equal to 10.2 plus 4xi. So they are asking whether this linear relationship exists. So what is our hypothesis? <coughs> we are checking whether this is equal to zero. Okay, I know this is four. Four is not equal to zero, but can we do it like that in hypothesis testing? What we check is the population parameter is equal to a particular hypothesized value. This is taken out of the sample. <coughs> and this regression line is for this particular sample only. If you take another sample, these values might slightly change. If this is a bad sample, these values have to drastically change. <coughs> we don't know, right? This particular model is taken out of this data only. We are checking whether this is truly truly existing in the population. Right? How, why are we doing inferences? We take a sample, <coughs> we make inferences about the population. We check whether this model is true enough to use it for the entire population by using this data. Okay. So that is why we formed the hypothesis like this. <coughs> Just because this is not zero, you cannot say the model is significant. <coughs> what if this is 0 0.0004? Somebody can say this is very close to zero, right? So you can't just look at this and say, <coughs> this is not zero, this model is, you can't say like that. It really depends on uh, the scale of measurement, right? If these are, so as these are counts, there's no problem. Sometimes we take measures out of um, centimeters, millimeters, micrometers, right? So <clears throat> depending on the scale, these ra the, the ratio is the same, but number of decimals that you incorporate really change, <clears throat> right? So just by looking at this, you can't say this is this model is significant that here, see, there's a four here. This is greater than zero. You can't say like that. You have to perform a proper hypothesis test. <clears throat> so this is the hypothesis. You are getting marks for this, right? You are getting marks for properly writing the hypothesis, or you can write it in terms of words. <coughs> model is significant, or uh, just stick to the question. They're asking whether there's a linear relationship. So you can say there's uh, the model is insignificant, model is significant. Or you can say there is no linear relationship between the two variables. There is a significant linear relationship between the two variables. So likewise, you can either write it using notation, standard notation. Make sure you don't put hats here. It's wrong if you put hats, right? <coughs> so those are the hypothesis testing techniques, right? So now this is the test statistic. You have to form the decision rule. After writing this, you write the decision rule. Before that, you have to compute the F critical value. What is F critical? F numerator denominator, right? One comma eight. The significance level is 5%. <coughs> You have to read this value from the table F18 in this one. So I gave you statistical tables. 
this value is 5.32. I'll quickly show you how to check that out. <coughs> it's here. <coughs> so you go to the F critical values table E. Here we are, right? And our intention is to check F one eight. <coughs> So you should be able to read the table as well, right? So see here degrees of freedom in the numerator. Here you can find the numerator degrees of freedom, right? Here you can find degrees of freedom of the denominator, the denominator degrees of freedom. And in between you can find the significant value, whether it is 5% or 10% or whatever it is. <coughs> so our numerator degrees of freedom is one. Yeah, we have to check under this column, our denominator degrees of freedom is eight. So we are checking in this block, one and eight. <coughs> one and eight. Here our significance level is 0 0.05, this one. So this is our value, 5.32. That is how you read the table. I have given this table book to you, so practice that as well. <coughs> that is how I got this value. So how, how do you form the decision rule? I told you a technique, right? Reject F, it's not. If. So. If our F ratio value falls somewhere here, reject it's not. This is the <clears throat> F critical value, <clears throat> right? Reject H naught if F ratio is greater than <coughs> F critical. Use whatever the notation you used here. Use whatever the notation you used here. Make it clear, right? Don't interchange these things, right? If you use F star here, use F star. Doesn't matter. Just uh, <clears throat> be stick to the notation that you use, okay? Anyway, you call the critical value to the table value. You can either say F tab table value, right? Anything. <clears throat> so you write the decision rule, form the hypothesis, write the number table, write the critical value, then decision. <coughs> What is the decision? So, is this happening? Let's see. You don't have to draw this, even if you drew, doesn't matter. What is our F ratio? That is 72 point something. So, it's somewhere here, right? Our critical value is 5.32. This is 72 point something, 72. So, <coughs> this is in the rejection region. How do you write the decision? Reject H not with five percent level <coughs> of significance. You are getting marks for this, so write this properly. There's no other way of writing this. Reject H not with you have to give the level of significance, otherwise, you are not getting marks. Okay. You have to write the decision rule, you have to write the decision. And so it's not is rejected. That means this is correct. So which means this model is significant, right? But what is our question? <clears throat> when you're writing the conclusion or the interpretation, you must write it in plain language. Don't use technical terms. 
at all okay because you are writing a conclusion <clears throat> or an interpretation for a non statistician to understand your um, finding right so non statisticians don't know these technical terms so you don't use the words like reject null hypothesis significance don't use words like those when you are writing interpretations or conclusions right you have to stick to plain language and the easiest technique of writing the conclusion is get extracted from the question because the question is the conclusion you have to say yes or no right <clears throat> that's the easiest way of not going wrong so don't use technical terms if you use technical terms you're not going to get any marks so that should be comprehensible by a non statistician <coughs> so this is basically our question test whether what there is a linear relationship between these two so uh, is there a linear relationship what is our finding yes there is a linear relationship because we rejected that not right that means beta 1 is there it's not zero right <clears throat> which mean the linear relationship exists so it's just a matter of copy pasting this one there is a linear relationship between blah 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 it's just the matter of copying and pasting this what if s not is not rejected <clears throat> you can simply say there is no linear relationship between blah 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 up to here you can write <clears throat> this is just plain language right rejecting significance don't write anything right what you have to write is here according to this question according to the answer that you got the decision that you made the conclusion is there is a linear relationship between the number of ampules broken and the number of transfers from one aircraft to another over the shipment route if you write this you are getting full marks <clears throat> I'll write it for you. Otherwise, you you will never write it <clears throat> when it comes to the exam. <clears throat> so let me clear this <clears throat> based on the decision. Uh, we can say just write conclusion. You never go wrong if you copy it from the question, right? but make sure you write the correct conclusion we are writing there is a linear relationship because we rejected it now if we didn't reject you have to write there is no linear relationship that's the only change that you have to make right <clears throat> stick to the question don't write beta 1 is significant don't, don't write things like that okay for the con the conclusion don't have to write paragraphs okay <coughs> this is the conclusion so this is what you are asked to do <clears throat> this is another sort of a hypothesis testing that you have anonymously learned anova anova method <clears throat> you construct the anova table you take the f ratio this is the test statistic like in t test is is a test how do you do you are given a formula you plug in values to that you compute the test statistic <coughs> compare it with the critical value make the decision same thing you did here the only special thing that you did was constructing the anova table just because you are asked to construct it otherwise you can simply take the f ratio but in regression you are usually asked to construct this <coughs> because there's a lot of information 
that we can extract out of this table, right? So this is how you do. <coughs> Any questions? Is this clear? <coughs> Is this clear? <coughs> yes, madam. Okay, thank you for confirming. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this and complete your notes later on. <coughs> if you have any questions, please ask. <coughs> right. Um, <coughs> before going to this, I just want to uh, make you open-eyed on something very important and very interesting also. You can cross-check your hypothesis testing with this. Okay. I'll just clear it off. Uh, can you remember we computed a confidence interval for, for our slope parameter that is beta one? I think not in the previous lecture, but before that. Uh, I'll just write that down for you. 95% confidence interval for beta one. We computed this, just check your notes, we computed this. The answer that we got was, something like this. So how did we interpret this? We are 95% <coughs> confident that beta one lies between these two values. Okay. Without doing anything, by looking at this confidence interval, you can say that this is significant. How? I think we did this for the same example, right? <coughs> So this is beta one. So four is between these two, right? That is anyway accepted, okay? <coughs> Our hypothesis was what? Is this value in this confidence interval? Yes or no? You have to answer that. Is this value contained in this confidence interval? Yes or no? Yes or no? <coughs> Somebody, please. Is my question clear? Is zero containing in this confident interval? No, ma'am. No. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. So zero is out of this confidence interval, which means we are ninety-five percent confident that beta one cannot be zero. So instead of ANOVA <coughs> hypothesis testing. <coughs> By looking at the confidence interval, you can easily say <clears throat> that this model is significant. What if you get, uh, <coughs> let's say, uh, let's say you got a confidence interval like this for beta one. Let's say you got a confidence interval like this, right? So, how do we interpret this? We are 95% confident that beta one lies between these two values, right? So zero is somewhere here. <coughs> here, <coughs> in this case, zero is included in this. You don't have to do ANOVA or anything. If you're asked, you have to, right? Otherwise, if you are asked to construct a confidence interval, and by looking at that, tell me with <coughs> whether the model is significant. By simply looking at this, zero is included in this, 
So zero is a possibility. We are ninety five percent confident, right? That zero is a possibility for beta one. So if it is a possibility, the model is not significant. So in this type of a case, <coughs> by looking at this, you can say the model is insignificant. So if we do an ANOVA and check a hypothesis test for this, we are definitely getting that H naught is not rejected, <coughs> right? So by constructing confidence intervals, you can say, you can comment on the model. You are getting the same result anyway. Uh, like uh, for this example from the ANOVA, we got that H naught is not rejected, right? Even by looking at the confidence interval, it is proven that H naught is not rejected, right? So zero is not included in this. <coughs> so beta one has to be uh, <coughs> some value between these. We are ninety five percent confident. So even in hypothesis testing, we are giving out our decision or the conclusion with five percent level of significance, right? So same thing. Same thing done in different ways. Through confidence interval method, you can comment on the model significance. Through ANOVA, you still can comment on the model significance. Same result you should be getting. Two different ways, but same result. Is this understood? <coughs> Do I have to explain it once again? Is this understood? Yes, sir. <coughs> okay, thank you. If anybody finds it difficult to uh, understand this, please speak up now because you are going to get these things in the assignment and you're getting one month's time to do that, right? These, these are one of the easiest things in regression, right? Some obvious and easiest things. So uh, get used to <clears throat> do careful computations, right? So easy, understandable things. <coughs> Okay, so coefficient of determination, this is the last part that we are uh, going to discuss today. Mm, this is your assignment, so I'm not going to discuss that. <coughs> yeah, the plot is given, it's okay. So <coughs> coefficient of determination, what this is. Coefficient of determination, right, R squared measures the degree of linear association between y and predictors. Yes. By a hypothesis test, what can we say? Whether the model is significant or not. How significant? Can you give it as a percentage? So that is what uh, our squad speak of. How significant, how much significant? Model can be very <coughs> less significant, right? It, it can, be uh, uh, non-significant, it can be significant. Even in the significant category, it can be very, very significant. It can be a very little significant. So how significant your model is, that is measured by R squared as a uh, decimal value. You're getting this as a decimal value. You can express it as a percentage, right? So how does it, is it <coughs> computed? Simple. So that, that is why I said, it's very important to construct a NOAA table uh, because you can extract a lot of information out of it. So how this is computed? SSR over SSTO. Regression sums of scar divided by total sums of scar. So all these things could be extracted out of the ANOVA. This will give you R squared. Or <coughs> you can say one minus SSE over SSTO. See, if you take the common ratio here, SSTO, 1 minus SSC means what? SSTO minus SSC. That will give you SSR. You can use either of the formula. <coughs> Both are the same. So what does this mean? What proportion of uh, the model is explained by the total variation? What uh, proportion of variation? What proportion of regression is explained by the total variation. <coughs> this is what this means, right? 
<coughs> so coefficient of determination varies <coughs> between zero and one. Of course, this is a proportion, right? Or else in terms of, <coughs> sorry, in terms of uh, percentages, you can say, this is varying between zero and 100%, right? So for simple linear regression model, R squared is the square is the correlation. <coughs> this is a property. You know Pearson's correlation coefficient, right? Simple R. If you take the square of that in simple linear regression, <coughs> that is another way of computing R squared. <coughs> okay. So this is how we interpret this. R squared indicates the proportion reduction of variability of y attained by the use of information about x. Proportion of the total variation of y, which has been explained by x. So this is the best way, most sensible way of explaining, right? So high R squared indicates <coughs> that the estimated regression line is a good fit. So this is like uh, <coughs> checking the goodness of fit. Usually, uh, if we say, <coughs> usually, if we say the R squared is like 80%, uh, we say it's a good model. <coughs> but in practical terms, uh, it, uh, we usually don't get uh, very high values for R squared in practical data sets. But hypothetically, we say it's very good if we get 75% to 80%. If we get a higher R squared, we say the model is a good fit. It's a good fit. How significant? If it is well fitted, you're getting a higher R squared. Okay. However, some situations, this is not necessarily true. We'll talk about this <coughs> when it comes to multiple linear regression. Okay. So uh, for this one, for this particular example, shall we compute R squared and interpret it? because you are going to need it for the assignment. So <coughs> for this air fright ampules scenario, R squared is what? SSR over SSTO. <coughs> you can get this information from the NOA table that we constructed. So this is basically Okay, so you can say this is 90.09%, right? You can either keep it like this or like this, doesn't matter, okay? When you're interpreting, you can say, so if you're rounding off to this, this to 90%, you have to use the word approximately. <clears throat> approximately, this is how you interpret, okay? 90% <coughs> of total variability and this is an interpretation you have to go in plain language <laughs> this is the interpretation. So, in general, if you say, so this is the R squared value, approximately 100 times R squared percentage. If you are interpreting it as a percentage. 
approximated this one of total variables of what is this? I'll just uh, write it in another color. <coughs> Number of ampules broken. Number of transfers, total variability of uh, Y, explained by X. <clears throat> so we have a variability of the response, which is 100%. From that variability, this particular model can explain 90%. That is the idea. Okay. What is our model? <clears throat> How good this model is? 90%. 90 <clears throat> what does it mean? What is the goodness of it? So, out of the total variability, this particular model can explain 90%, which is a very good value. Okay, so when you are asked <coughs> to interpret the R squared, this is how you write. Don't write approximately 90% of the total variability of Y is explained by X. If you write like that, zero marks for the interpretation. Right? If the question is given in terms of X and Y, there's no other option. You have to write it. But if the question has a name for the response and the predictor variable, you have to use the words because interpretations must be in plain language. Have I used any technical term here? <coughs> no, right? Why I put Y and X here? Just to give you a general format to remember this. 90% of Y is explained by X. Keep that in head, <coughs> right? But don't write Y and X if there are values, if there are names given to these. That's how you interpret R squared. Any issue with this? <coughs> Do you have any problem uh, on today's lecture? <clears throat> you can ask now because we have approximately uh, 20 minutes to end the lecture. I won't keep you for so, lo so long if you don't have questions. <clears throat> you can see the participant number is reduced from 18 to 12. Uh, six people have dropped. <clears throat> I don't know whether it's hard for them or very easy for them. Uh, but <clears throat> tell them and all the absentees today um, to do the ex uh, to do the assignment. Uh, it carries 40 marks. It's very important. It's going to uh, be averaged out and uh, directly added to your end exam results. Okay, so uh, I might give you 40% uh, out of uh, 100 uh, for the end exam. <laughs> if this is going on an online basis, it really depends. Anyway, I'm giving you 40 marks for the assignment. So it's a big proportion. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, I'll explain you about the assignment. So basically, I have given you this question with this data set for the assignment. So the first few parts are actually done for you. <clears throat> but you know, these are constructed by using 
R Softap, right? Uh, these are constructed by using R. So uh, <coughs> I want you all to manually get this done. Plot the data. You have to plot it manually because it gives you a lot of information. Like when you do this, you will uh, understand why I asked you to plot this. Okay. So plot it. <coughs> and here you are asked to uh, plot the regression line on the scatter plot. So this might not be the line you are getting. Okay. So make sure you draw the uh, proper line, right? Uh, although <coughs> these are here, you are given marks for these parts as well. So they are bonus marks <coughs> because the answer is there, right? You have to <coughs> do all these questions. Uh, it's there in the LMS. <coughs> so here's the assignment. Uh, it is open from, uh, I think, 1 p.m. today. You can start submitting from 1 p.m. onwards. Uh, so the deadline is 28th February. Today is 28th January. So you have one month's time to do this. Don't wait out the, until the last minute to do this. <coughs> Late submissions are not accepted. So uh, because uh, there's a cutoff time for this. So after the deadline, you won't be able to submit any document to the system. Right? Uh, so when you click on this, you can <coughs> find the question here, right? So take that question and do, and you can make the submission. Um, is it okay if we find R squared by <coughs> scarring R? Um, yeah, someone is asking me whether it is okay to find the coefficient of determination by using the PSN's correlation coefficient. It's okay if you have <coughs> enough information to compute it. Yes, if you have, if you are given a data set, you can compute simple R, that is PSN's correlation coefficient. That's okay. But why should you go uh, in that method, uh, given that you have already constructed the annual table and you know the values of SSR and SSTO? You can directly get that up, right? So <coughs> here in regression, uh, we expect you to go in the formula SSR divided by SSTO, but there's nothing wrong going with the <coughs> PSN's correlation coefficient marks are given. I think that consumes you additional uh, time and effort. Uh, so I can give you marks, but stick to the um, formulas uh, because uh, when it comes to multiple uh, linear regression, you cannot compute R squared using that. It's only for the simple linear regression, but you still get the same value. Doesn't matter. If you like, you can compute it using uh, <coughs> the correlation coefficient. Doesn't matter. Okay. Thank you for the question. So <coughs> if you don't have any questions, you can leave the meeting. Thank you for participating today. And thank you very much for tolerating my uh, sickness today. Um, if you don't have questions, you can leave. If you have questions, you can stay and ask. Thank you and stay safe.